As a stark raving entrepreneur, you know there are many ways that you can earn money. You can have many different streams of revenue, and that's really a good idea. And one of those is getting products that you can create, create right after you've done something in the service world. It could be something that you're used to, something you're handy doing, and you can make that a workbook. It can be a, a product of audio. It can be a video product. All of that is possible. Julie Holmes is a friend of ours who spoke recently at one of our Stark Raving Entrepreneurs meetings, and she was right on target on how to pivot to product. And we're going to show you how you can do that. I'll give you this excerpt of what she presented to us. Take your notes on this. You're going to like it. And join me at the end of this, and I'll tell you ways that you can get involved in those meetings at no charge. Come on over and get a chance to learn about all kinds of things that are going to help you as a stark raving entrepreneur who's creating content and helping others. Now, join me as we welcome Julie Holmes. Now, my philosophy, philosophy fundamentally is that we are, every single one of us, entrepreneurs. Even if we primarily earn our revenue through professional speaking, then we are still entrepreneurs who speak. If we primarily do coaching, we are entrepreneurs who coach. But at the base of it is that we have created our own business, our own mission, our own strategies, and then how we fill our funnel and how we fill our pipeline of work and revenue is very dependent on how we want to spend our time and what our financial goals and expectations are. So take what works for you, throw the rest away. You won't hurt my feelings. All right, so let's talk a little bit about products. Um, I have uh, delved into a lot of different products. Um, as Gina said earlier, I actually, my corporate background was in product design and development. So I was in product management and product strategy and next generation products for enterprise software for over 20 years. And then uh, when I left corporate, whew, when I left corporate, I then went off on my own and started building products. So I have done physical products, Hey Mike's. So for those of you that have heard of Hey Mike, and some of you have them, I of course have done books. We can talk a little bit about books in just a second, but I don't write books to sell them on Amazon. That's not my goal for books. Um, and I'll explain that. I do digital products. I, of course, have services, so I do professional speaking, of course, like I'm keynoting tomorrow, and I also um, do consulting. That's a big part of what I do. And then I also have created apps and games. So I have, for example, created iOS uh, games, and I designed the SpeakerFlow CRM, which is now owned and run by the SpeakerFlow team. So basically, I have a three times rule. I'm always making stuff, hacking stuff, trying to come up with shortcuts for things because fundamentally, I'm lazy. And I just don't like to do the same kind of hard work over and over again. So I just start to think like, oh, I could simplify that or, oh, I bet I could do this faster or I don't want to use this half-assed system. I would rather just build my own. And I love the art of building. And I have a three time rule. And that means that the third time somebody asks me for something, I think about how I can start to monetize it. So for example, I had built what is now SpeakerFlow CRM. I had built that for myself as my own CRM system. That was my uh, beginning of COVID project. <laughs> that was, oh, I have a lot of time on my hands now. What could I do with that time? I'll build a CRM system. So uh, by the time I had three or four people who had asked me if they could get a copy of it, if I could help them build their CRM systems, I thought, man, that's it. I can absolutely package this up and monetize it. And that's what I did. Uh, any questions so far? I've got people that have bought things in, I think we're up to 60 countries now in a variety of different products, but that gives you a bit of an idea. All right, moving right along. All right, featuring my dogs in this presentation. I've broken this uh, program up into two parts. The first one is just some quick tips about how you can think about your speaking business. And in fact, maybe we could just do a quick show of hands. Um, where are all my speakers? Who is a speaker, professional speaker? Excellent, good. Majority of people. That's what I figured. We do all like to hang out together. Um, so I'm going to just talk about how you can go about productizing your speaking business. In truth, it actually works for any type of service-related business. So if you're a coach, if you're a trainer, whatever it is, it'll work the same. And then the second part is just talking about how to add non-service products, which is really where I focus a lot of my time and effort because, uh, do you know, I like to make more money. That's really one of the major reasons. Moving on. 
All right, why do we pivot to products? There are actually six reasons. Um, five of them are here. The first one is we wanna earn more money. The reality is, is that we have a finite amount of time in our lives. And if we want to earn more money without staying up 24 by seven, we need more strategies to do that. So having products in your portfolio means that not only can you sell services to somebody, but you can then turn around and sell product as well. And again, I'll give you an example of that. The second reason is to serve better. Um, actually, one of the reasons I started thinking about pivoting to products as a bigger strategy in my business was a couple of years ago, I was meeting up with my mastermind here in the UK, and I was running late to our dinner, drinks, and uh, festivities. And I was running late because I'd been speaking that day. And as sometimes happens, and we're always very flattered when it does, I had a queue of people, a big line of people afterwards that wanted to chat with me. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry I'm late. You know, I just, there are just so many people and I wanted to make sure I got to talk to all of them. And my good friend, Julie Craftfield said to me, well, what did you have to sell them? And I said, I don't, I don't understand the question. And she said, well, what did you have to sell them? Because they weren't done with you. So what did you have to leave with them? They weren't done. So every time somebody comes up and wants more from you, that is an indicator to you that they need something from you to take away, either to keep them going, either to help them apply what you've shared with them, but they want more. Do you have more to give them? So it's about serving them better. The third reason is about diversification. Um, diversification never became more apparent than when COVID hit. I'm sure like many of you, I found myself definitely uh, panicked um, at the beginning. Uh, I can distinctly remember uh, attending an event in Denver, Colorado, and it was a week before the lockdown and everybody was like, oh, it'll blow over. And what really blowed over was everything on my calendar. And um, I was very lucky that I had a product already in the mix. Hey, Mike was out and happy and, and running wild. Um, but I definitely found that I needed more diversification for my own peace of mind and because I'm married to an accountant. So the fourth reason is to grow bigger. This is a huge part about scaling. Um, and this is scaling your business, but also scaling your reach. The truth is, is we can't speak to everybody all the time. We need another way to grow our audience and to have bigger reach so that our messages can serve bigger audiences and so that we can build bigger, better, stronger communities. And five, if you're anything like me, I get bored really easily. So many people in our community are creators. We're partly driven into this field because we love to create. So I don't want to just do the same keynote day in and day out. And I don't want to just write new keynotes because that's time, time consuming and expensive. I like to build new stuff. Nobody makes prototypes with business cards like I do. I mean, I have like a standing order for duct tape. Stuff's amazing. But the number six reason is because when I started to incorporate more products into my business, it allows me to run my business with more confidence. It feels like I can weather any storm. I have more spread, more capability to balance my energy, to balance my interest, to balance my pocketbook all of those things because I just don't have all my eggs in that one basket. So raise your hand if you recognize any of those reasons as something that would motivate you to create a product. Something in there for everybody, right? There's one or two of those reasons that connects with everybody, I think. So let's talk first about how you go about productizing your speaking business. All right, first up, Let's talk about inventory. Now, one of the interesting things about speaking and any service-related businesses, and, and I used to work for professional services companies before I got into product years ago, and it was fascinating to me that they don't consider those services to be products. I want you to imagine for a second that every single service you provide is a product that you have in inventory. It's an item that you have to keep in stock. And by that, I mean, you have to keep it up to date. You have to check the expiry date on it. You have to have a catalog of everything that you have at your disposal at all times so that you know exactly what you have in your inventory to sell. But more importantly, when you think about it as being something that you have to keep in inventory, there's a cost to having everything in inventory. Your warehouse 
is only so big. You can only maintain so much at one time. And there's a cost to every single service that you provide. Talk about that more in just a second. So for example, some of the things that you might have in your inventory that you probably don't want to have in there is, uh, you know, that coaching that you don't really enjoy or, you know, gosh, I find myself working with middle management, but I don't really love working with middle management. I've got that day long training course that I delivered that one time to that one client that was that one place that I never, ever want to go back to again. And nobody's ever asked me for since then. Oh, and I have that one keynote that somebody in the PSA said I should totally write, but then I could never sell it after I wrote it. Or maybe I've got that keynote that I really want to deliver, but I don't really know how to package it up and sell it. So it just sits there gathering dust as an idea. I mean, there's just all this junk out there. So my first challenge for you is to make a list of every single service that you offer. Every single variation of every single service make an inventory list. And as soon as you do that, now we get to get nerdy. Who loves a good spreadsheet? Nope, just me. Just, that's all right. Nope. Okay. It's fine. Just me. All right. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. All right. Here's the deal. Remember how I said there was a cost to everything in your inventory? Well, this exercise actually led me to stop doing coaching. So I want you to think for a second whether or not you're investing your time in your most profitable inventory products. So let me walk you through this. We start off with a list of all your products. Remember, your first job is to sit there and make a big, long list of everything that you have at your disposal to sell. Next, if you were to project how many a year you expect to deliver of these, how many a year are you going to do? What's your quantity? Now, how long does it take for you to create that particular service? So let's say it's a one-day training course. Well, a one-day training course for me would probably take me about 100 hours to create if I was going to make a one-day training course. Probably more, actually, if I'm being honest. Now, I mean, that's we're talking the slides, the outline, the prep, the rehearsal, everything like that. How long does it take every time you deliver it? Now, this is your actual up in front of the room delivery time. How much time do you have to invest every time to prepare it before you deliver it? And if you're in person or if you're traveling anywhere, how much time are you spending traveling to do it? Now, let me walk this example through a keynote. So I primarily do keynotes when I speak, and I'll be totally upfront. I don't speak nearly as much as I used to. Um, Ever since COVID, I focused more on product. So while I do still speak, um, I'm much more selective about it, which again is another good reason to invest in product so that you can be a lot more picky about when you do services and who you do them for. So let's say that we've got a keynote and I'm going to put a new keynote together and I'm going to plan to deliver that keynote four times in a year. Um, And it takes me, I've estimated, about 100 to 150 hours for every new keynote I create. Now, that's everything from doing research to prep to slides to, you know, interviews, all that kind of stuff. Now, let's say that every time I deliver that keynote, I'm really calling it two hours of delivery. If anybody is like me, I'm done on that day. Like in reality, if I'm doing a keynote, I'm wiped for the entire day. So really, I could put eight hours on here because I'm done. I'm not doing anything else productive on a keynote day. It just exhausts me probably because I do like this all the time. Uh, And then prep, like I do interviews beforehand, I tailor every presentation. So there's a certain amount of time that goes with that. And if I'm traveling, like if I'm in the States, that's a day on either side, right? So that's easily two days out of my calendar to haul myself to wherever it happens to be. Um, And there you go. Um, Let's say that I'm selling it for $5,000 just for the sake of argument. But let's say my cost is $1,000 every time I sell it because I roll my travel costs into my speaking fee. Or maybe you have workbook costs or maybe you have, you know, whatever other costs you have as part of your delivery. When I look at that and do the calculations for that, it comes out to be about $125 an hour. So that's my hourly rate for keynoting. Does everybody see how that works? Everybody comfortable with that? 
Perfect. Uh, this spreadsheet, along with copies of the slides and some other bonus content, will all be made available to you at the end if you would like them. I know you are all eager to go and have a play on this spreadsheet, and I don't blame you. It is a thing of beauty. Okay, moving right along. Once you understand the cost of having those services, now consider what are your primary services, and I want you to think about how you could start to treat those as if they were physical, legitimate products. Now, what I mean by this is, for example, I brand all of my keynotes. Now, the reason that I do that, one, it's a cool tip that I got from my buddy Nathan Littleton. And part of the reason is that when people start to see a branded, packaged service, they don't negotiate on it nearly as much. It's also a very distinctive offer from somebody goes, would you like me to come and deliver a keynote where I turn around and go, would you like the Tech It or Leave It program? Or would you prefer that we do? Now that's a bright idea. Here are your two choices and here's what's included in that package. So they feel like they're getting something of, uh, of tangible value. So just imagine for a second what that looks like. And from a branding tip perspective, have a look at these and you can kind of see how I approach things. So I tend to have a very consistent look and feel, and then I tend to vary details within it so that no matter who I'm talking to, all of my collateral looks very similar. Well, there you have it. Some ways that you can add additional revenue to what you're doing by pivoting to product. We really appreciate Julie Holmes helping out on that. And by the way, if you want to see her and get more information from her, go to julieholmes.com. J-U-L-I-E-H-O-L-M-E-S.com. And you'll find a lot of good information there. And if you'd like to see other meetings that we have, come on over and register and get involved. It's a free attendance. We just want to bring a lot of good information to the world. Go over to StarkRavingEvent.com, StarkRavingEvent.com as one word, and we'll get a chance to see you there, and you'll get a chance to get a lot of good information that way. I'm Terry Brock. Thanks for joining me, and we'll look forward to seeing you again here at Stark Raving Entrepreneurs.